you know, you, you have this conversation with, uh, well, I guess I should ask, do you call Aaron while you're still at the building or do you talk to her on your way home or uh, later that night? Or do you just talk to her, you know, once you're home? Aaron was with me because she's from Pensacola. I got you. And that was an opportunity for us to go see, you know, some friends and family and, uh, make it a working trip. So she was there. She was there at the hotel and, uh, she was pretty upset. <clears throat> As you could imagine, we had a 12 year old and he's going to look at that and start asking questions. You know, you asked earlier if, if we talked about, you know, matches or wrestling or any of that stuff, that was something that needed to be explained to him. And we did have a conversation about that. Probably one of the only ones we ever had about anything in the business. So how ironic is that? But, uh, she's very, um, Aaron has always been my biggest backer, my best friend. Uh, the one person I could get the truth from, you know, when you're the shits, she'll tell you you're the shits or she'll tell me, you know, and when you've been mistreated, she'll tell you that. And it's kind of hard to use the word mistreated towards an adult male that, uh, you know, is more than capable of taking care of his own business, which I am and I, I was. Um, but when it's hurt her feelings and she's looked past, you know, the round, she's not a mark. She knows that we're in the entertainment industry and she knows sometimes you got to make somebody look bad to make them look good after that. You know, she gets it. She gets the whole scenario. She just felt like they just made a fool out of me other than going with, with tried and true methods of getting heat because I don't think anybody <clears throat> and the whole reason to get heat is sell tickets. I don't think anybody walked out of that arena or not that night, whether it be wrestling fans, anybody that wasn't involved in the promo, the rest of the crew, that looked at each other and went, boy, that's going to sell a bunch of tickets. That's All they managed to do was take a very special moment from the previous week <clears throat> and just shed all over it. Let's talk about what Wade Keller wrote. He says the spoofing of Arn Anderson's memorable retirement speech from the August 25th Nitro by Kevin Nash, six Marcus Bagwell and Conan on the September 1st Nitro stole the show but it didn't amuse the targets of the satire and thus led to a blow up backstage. Arn Anderson and Ric Flair were livid with some of the areas of the satire that were ventured in Anderson's case. He said afterwards that his wife and 12 year old son were upset by the skit. He said his son cried as a result and his wife was upset that his drinking was made an issue on national television. Flair was reportedly upset with Six's mocking of his dancing and the line. I'm screaming at the top of my lungs and I don't know why the feeling within the NWO and by others in WCW towards Flair and Anderson apparently is quote unquote tough. While some think the skit went too far. Others believe it only went too far because Flair and Anderson are open targets and are only sensitive because the skit spoof some of Flair and Anderson's legitimate insecurities. In any case, the controversy did temper what had already been an all around strong edition of nitro with the tribute being paid to Arn Anderson throughout the entire show with sound bites from various wrestlers. Flair and Anderson were scheduled to appear later on Nitro, but refused to come out and left Nitro early, believing there was no way they could follow that skit and look good. On the flip side, Chris Benoit felt slighted that he wasn't part of the skit. It was talk of a using a mannequin that looked like Benoit, but it was too heavy and was on wheels and they wouldn't have been able to get it to the ring over the rampway without making a big production of it. So that's Wade Keller's report. Let's uh, a lot to unpack here. Was flair upset about the promo? What do you remember him saying about all this? Yeah. I mean, you know, I'm, I'm sure he, Rick could give a shit about the dancing and the screaming at the top of his lungs. That's, that's all bullshit. He did see that other than being you know, uh, put together or the way it was done or the message it was sending. 
no one had ever thought is this going to draw money that never came into it this was people entertaining themselves now kevin nash has taken credit i've seen in print about it being his idea maybe it was terry taylor we heard you know was responsible for it it was his idea you know who knows what what the idea was but here here's the you know, I go back to business because I've always taken care of business. I've always been a businessman. I've, I've always addressed everything I've done when I'm at work in a business-like manner. If it wasn't meant to draw money and there's no place that you can go with it to try to build a program or try to draw money or try to, uh, down the road, pay this off in some fashion. There was no payoff for this. Why in the hell, here's my question, if you really wanted to draw money with it, and you really wanted it to go somewhere, and you wanted this to masterpiece that they felt like they had put together, and uh, since they had destroyed the true masterpiece a week earlier, and I'll just go ahead and say it, even if it is me, because that was real. This was like uh, Saturday Night Live and a bad version of it. Uh, if there was no intent to try to draw money with it, where were all those other guys when this was going on? If you're sitting home and you're watching this and you're watching them, you know, them make fools out of all of us, what kept those guys, the horsemen, from coming through the curtain? And even if they got left laying, make a fight out of it. Let it go somewhere. Let it make sense in the real world. Because in the real world, where are all those guys at? When, where was Mongo? Where was Chris Benoit when all this was going on? They just conveniently weren't in the building. They conveniently were just sitting in the back getting pissed but not doing anything about it. I don't, you know, if there's not a means to the end, those guys just went out and spent a lot of TV time for their own enjoyment and their own pleasure with no idea of how they were going to draw money off of it. And that's the part that bothered me more than anything. If it's a means to an end, other than just entertaining yourself, then I'll go along with anything. And I had no choice but to go along with that. It was done. And 